How does Grim Dawn shape up compared to other popular ARPG titles in 2024? Well, first off, I wish I had tried this title sooner. It's absolutely incredible. It's been out for several years, and there's plenty of DLC and expansion content for it already. However, there's a highly anticipated expansion, Fangs of Astrakhan, which is slated for release later this year, and feeling slightly burnt out from last Epoch Endgame and awaiting the next season for Diablo 4, it was finally time to give this title a go. After creating my character and beginning the game without selecting a class, I knew something special was in store. I quickly reached level 2, and I was able to choose my first class. That's right, the first class. And the second class, if you choose, can be unlocked at level 10. Immediately, I was in love with this dual class system. The possible combinations of classes, different abilities, and synergies were already rapidly whirling through my head, and I had only just begun the game. Add in a devotion system to further specialize your character, and there's a lot of replayability right off the bat. I made several characters to test various gameplay styles and see what I enjoyed. Surprisingly, it didn't seem to matter what I made in terms of progression. Every character continued to do just fine as I leveled. I even made a character with no active abilities just to see if it would work, and it did. Now, it's doubtful that every build will hold up at an endgame level, but there's a large percentage of people that just prefer to play through the story in ARPGs and feel that power creep as they complete the campaign. The dopamine effect in this game is crazy. It seems like there's an unending amount of gear upgrades and every level noticeably seems to add solid value to your character. It is hands down the most satisfying leveling experience I've ever had in an ARPG. The world map is incredibly open, and I'd say it's more akin to an MMO than typical ARPGs in that regard. At first, I was turned off by all the nooks and crannies. The thought of exploring the entirety of the map in an ARPG was off-putting, but all those thoughts were quickly cast aside as the game continued to rain down loot and upgrades everywhere I went. By the time I had reached the early 20s, my Arcanist basically had a full fire setup, including boots that left a fire trail and items that enhanced the burn effect or damage over time my main spell left on enemies. This character is only single class at this point, but eventually it'll be dual class. In fact, if you're unhappy with your talent choices, it's incredibly easy to respect them for a small cost. This is very useful while leveling as well, since you can remove points from early talents and invest them in later ones as you gain the ability to unlock them. You gain new points with each level, you, you can put them in various skills you've unlocked or the class itself for a bonus, and after enough points are placed, you can gain access to the later tiers. I'm yet to make use of the crafting system, simply because there's no shortage of upgrades at this point. However, finding recipes, books, and notes all yield experience for reading them. There are tons of side quests, and again the nature of this game dropping so many useful items make them feel worth doing as opposed to busy work. It's also worth noting that this game features a transmog system, where you can alter your character's appearance. I've been enjoying the different looks of random pieces I acquire so far, but it's nice to know in case you find some valuable gear that you can't stand looking at. This game reminds me of the original Diablo, the very first one. You can place points into attributes as you level up and increase your stats. This will also allow access to different pieces of equipment with various requirements. Now, although it reminds me of the original Diablo, it's more like a completely remastered and improved version of it with added layers of complexity and depth, all for the better. With an overwhelming number of positives to say about this game, I do have two negatives worth sharing. Many areas of the map feature maze-like patterns, and you can get part way to find out that you're stuck and need to backtrack. Nobody likes backtracking in 2024, especially after you've defeated the enemies and you're just walking through empty terrain in a rather large world with that MMO field as described before. Second, although I'm new to Grim Dawn, I'm not new to ARPGs, and I can't help but feel if you are, that this would be very overwhelming to jump in for the first title of the genre. Given all the additions the game has had since its original release, there's a plethora of different stats, effects, ailments, and it would be very confusing if you had never played an ARPG before. I've heard from others who have played the game multiple times that it's highly enjoyable to run through the story over and over, but the endgame isn't nearly as fun. I'll of course make my own assessment once I reach it, however, this title so far has been absolutely amazing, and regardless, if what they say is true, then it would still be a great title to periodically do a run on a new character or build, easily mixing it up from your previous journey. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.